I'm about to speak to Julie Baker, the Head of Enterprise and Community Finance at NatWest. And you know, I've been working with NatWest for a long period of time now. And so I'm fascinated to talk to Julie about not only how this period of time has been, but also how it worked when they had to release so many things to support financially the small business community. Um, I'm eager to talk to her about the Alison Rose Review um, and the findings that came out of that and some of the initiatives NatWest have created to make sure that this report actually makes a fundamental difference. Having spent time with Alison Rose herself, um, I know she's a remarkable woman. Actually meeting Julie before, um, going to an, uh, events with Julie, I know that this team, it really, really does put their money where their mouth is, puts their efforts into really supporting women, children and the small business community. Um, so I, for one, have got many, many questions. We've collated questions from this community and it's going to be a fantastic interview. Hello everyone, my name is Julie. I'm a banker and I've been supporting businesses for over 30 years. I'm looking forward to talking to Holly on this week's SME SOS about how at NatWest we are supporting our customers, employees and communities in these difficult and uncertain times. Hi! Hi. How, <laughs> How are you? you? <laughs> oh, thank you for asking, Holly. Um, I've had a lot of time to think about that just lately, as I'm sure we all have. And uh, I suppose we've all had time to reflect and think what is most valuable in life. So for me, who's had a busy career for over 30 years, I've treasured the extra time I've been able to spend with my husband. But I've got to say, I'm the person that gets the energy from meeting other people, my networks and my team. And my team have been absolutely wonderful. I'm immensely proud of all of them. They've adapted really well to this new way of working. You know, they've had to adapt, upskill, retrain. Some of them are juggling homeschooling. Yeah. I'm sort of my hat off to all of them and this new ways of working. So I guess we're, we're sort of all in the same storm, but in different boats. Absolutely. Now, what were those, I've got a question for you, those first few days of lockdown, I mean, when I reflect on what I was dealing with in terms of my, just my mind trying to personally comprehend it all, then think about the business, then think about the community, um, NatWest were basically fundamental and I, I you know I'm so proud to be working with NatWest but fundamental working closely with the government um, to quickly look at how to support businesses. Will you tell me what that time was like? If you can take yourself back, because I, I mean, I can only begin to imagine what it was like, but what it was like and what that, how did NatWest adapt? Yeah, no, and, and uh, thank you for that question. And I'm going to go back a little bit further because um, as you know, Holly, we had a new CEO last year, Alison Rose. Mm -hmm. And on the 14th of February this year, she stood up in front of the employees, her customers, stakeholders, investors, the market, and said, well, we're going to become a purpose-driven bank. And the purpose statement that uh, went out that day was, we will champion potential, helping people, families, businesses, and communities thrive. And in every decision we make, we will put that purpose lens on. So at that time, little did we know that yeah. six weeks down the line that we would be hit with this pandemic and COVID. And Alison has very much from the outset, you know, led um, some incredible sort of changes. So um, in mid-March, when the noise was going around the city and, and, and around saying, look, it's not safe to, uh, to travel and come into the, uh, uh, the conurbations anymore, um, this is, decision was made by Alison and the exec team that actually we will seek for 60,000 of our employees, so that was the majority, to be working from home. Our people are our number one priority. They've got to be safe. They've got to be secure. Mm. They've got to have that peace of mind. And, and with that came the assurance that we would pay all of our employees until the 30th of September, even if they had to juggle homeschooling and couldn't work the traditional nine to five. Mm. We're really flexible around, you know, when you log on. And certainly I've got people in my team that will log on at six, work for three hours and then do three hours homeschooling yeah. with kids. Yeah. And that is okay. Do you know what? That, that is okay. And actually, it's put us in the best place to serve our customers, which is what we're here to do. And, and certainly then the next stage was, and you mentioned working with the government, mm. 
it was okay so we've made the arrangements for 60,000 to work from home we've made sure they've got the right technology and um, yeah. some of them are certainly feeling a little bit health wise and there's been some horrendous you know stories out there of, um, of sort of challenges so um, we've always had a well-being hub, but we've adapted that hub to support our employees and their families should there be any problems um, during the sort of COVID outbreak as well. So, you know, once we've done all of that, we've got to, you know, work in, in collaboration with the government. We say, OK, so what do our customers need? What do the businesses need? And what can we do to support? And so very uh, quickly, we had to adapt. We had to, at pace, build new processes and systems mm -hmm so that we could lead the way and, uh, and join other banks to provide the facilities that we needed. So in business, that was the, uh, uh, the first of all, it was the Sybil's loans, and then it was the bounce back loans. Um, but a lot more support other than in business was provided. You know, I've got to say, I'm really, really proud of the colleagues across personal banking, who yeah. straight away identified that we, we've got vulnerable customers out there, particularly the over 70s. So they set up a vulnerable cu uh, customer helpline. Um, there was a special helpline for NHS employees because we knew they would have a challenge getting into branches, which were on reduced opening times. Um, we offered uh, mortgage and loan capital repayment holidays, business loan capital repayment holidays, um, support with those furloughing staff through our mental services. Um, so, so lots as well as the, uh, the government support, Holly. Gosh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you think about that and you think, uh, and meanwhile, everyone's actually also, you know, with, with that demand um, almost on, you know, every team, everyone was also thinking of their personal situations, weren't they? They were thinking about how this was, how long this was going to go on for. Do you think there has been some key changes you, you've observed almost internally? Um, because I've heard that others... Um, how amazing the speed in which people adapted. So some of the experts I've had on here, you know, have basically said, in all honesty, Holly, this would have taken months. I mean, half a year to get to this point. And actually that entrepreneurial, even the government um, official that came on said this sort of entrepreneurial feeling came into the organization. Now, for someone that's dealing with 60,000 employees, do you feel that that's something that, has happened to NatWest and anything else that you would learn that could be of advice to small businesses? You know, actually, it was that speed that really has ignited things, Holly. Yeah, oh, definitely. And, and do you know what, when I sort of sit here and reflect on what has happened over the, you know, the last 10, 11 weeks, it has been a little bit like it been in a time machine. You know, we yeah. knew we were on that trend of, you know, uh, more people shopping online, high, the high streets looking different, yes. more hostilleries and less sort of shops, but, but, but still a, you know, huge community. But, but overnight, because of COVID, obviously the high street shut down, businesses had to adapt. And, and we were like that as well. Um, but we had to adapt in a way that we could support the customers we serve. So, yeah, being able to adjust at pace probably isn't something traditionally banks, you know, traditional yeah. banks have done. But oh boy, you know, was I impressed with the the teams that they work weekends, they work nights to build new processes and systems so that we would be able to offer first of all the civil facilities, then the bounce back loans, of, of, of which the um, the bounce back loan facility is is mainly digitized because we need yes. the that would come through um, would be unprecedented. And, and when we look at the requests for lending that we have seen over the last few weeks, you know, we have seen in a few weeks more than what we would normally see in a year at a time where our resources aren't in the business centres, no. they're working at home. So do bear with us. We're doing our very best to support all of our customers, um, both, both with the lending and, you know, and we are a financial institution and we want to be there to make sure we uh, support our customers with the funding, but also that other wraparound support that is so valuable, especially now for, for businesses that are, are going through, um, you know, challenges because of COVID that, you know, it is unprecedented and, and some probably don't, don't know, you know, where to, where to turn. So, you mm. know, what advice would I give to small, small businesses? Well, you know, d do be agile, do adapt, do accept that, you know, you probably, you or will need to change, but also do reach out and, uh, and ask for that support as well.
moving forward um and if we look at where, about what all of the things that you have launched and the corona business interruption loan scheme and the list goes on as you said what else is there going to be in the pipeline do you have has this been a time of learning because i can imagine as much as you've been almost breaking at the seams with that demand there's also this great insight that you must have gained as well oh. So we have an excellent um, entrepreneurship team and um, we did have 12 accelerators around the country and of course they've had to close but what the entrepreneurship team has been very entrepreneurial and they've built this amazing business builder program which is digitized. So if you are seeking to get support out there, want to, to a program, somebody to help you with your, you know, so your business planning, your research, or what's your competition that's like, all of those things that um, that um, our entrepreneurial team can help you with, some coaching, some mentoring, do reach out, do look at the NatWest Business Hub. But, the, but we have so much more to offer than that. Um, we have our women in business um, specialists. Nice. And something that the women in business team have done um, over the last six weeks is totally um, pivoted the accreditation program. So that is a program in partnership with Chartered Banker and Every Woman, where we put our um, relationship managers through through a workshop so they really understand the different psychology and, and then can identify and tackle the barriers that female um, entrepreneurs face disproportionately. But we're doing lots in that space. You know, we've pivoted our events program to webinars, working with partners. Um, we've got a billion pound fund specifically for female entrepreneurs, which is a lending fund. And uh, we've got in the startup space, um, the Back Her Business, which enables yes. a new to crowdfund and then match with some grant funding. Some, so some really exciting initiatives in the, uh, in the women in business space. And, uh, and I'll probably mention the Rose Review again later, but the Rose Review really brought to light the importance of actually focusing on some of those barriers that female find founders disproportionately face. And by tackling those, what we will do, it will inspire and encourage more females to set up in business. And of course, the big headline when Alison launched the Rose Review was if females were to set up and grow businesses at the same rate as males, that would be an extra £250 billion to the UK economy. So an incredible, incredible amount. Um, but, but what else are we doing? I think it's worth mentioning the Prince's Trust Enterprise Fund. Yes. So that's another fund, £6.5 million now of grant funding for young entrepreneurs between 18 and 30 years old, and it's grant funds up to £5,000 for those that have been impacted by covid um, part of my team um, also looks after social enterprises. We call it NatWest Social and Community Capital. Um, I'm so proud of how they pivoted during COVID. So not only have they offered their clients capital repayment holidays and some grant funding, we are going to um, market on Monday, announcing that we've got a million pounds worth of grant funding from the NatWest Social and Community Capital Charity to actually contribute to social enterprises out there. So do look out for that if you're running a social enterprise. Um, is, is really important. And of course, what is really important, I think we need to, to share as well today, Holly, is the support that we're providing for those really valuable businesses from ethnic minority black, uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And that could be the migrant entrepreneurs that we're supporting in Birmingham, getting them on local supply chains. It could be working with organisations like Hatch in London, where they have some amazing black um, and other ethnic minority backgrounds, social entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, um, getting them onto programs and the right support. And it could be um, our business builder program where we did a yes. couple of projects last year and we reached out and actually presented um, some of the workshops and support out in the communities, um, out in Brixton, where we really want to get out and reach and listen to what support is needed in those areas. I mean, community, if you can't, you know, I've got the Dottie Red Studio, I'm changing to Nat West. That's a comment that's coming through. <laughs> you know, the, the genuine thing is, is that these are all real things. And I've never worked with such a proactive team of people who, and I've been to your, I was lucky enough to be invited to one of your events and it was the round tables talking about female entrepreneurship within NatWest um, and how to support women, um, you know, and with Alison at the helm, um, it really feels like there is this absolutely amazing era uh, where you're focusing in, as you said, and as Alison has put such caring language into the fundamental sort of 
structure of NatWest now, you know, it's about this community. It's about helping all. It's about helping women. It's about helping young. And actually, you're putting your money where your mouth is. You know, there's never been such a case where you're saying it's a billion pound fund to help women. Yes, you know, it's just unbelievable unbelievable yes. now tell me what other things came out of that report that that sort of when you read it yourself sort of made you sit up and realize what a journey that we're on yeah no th th thank you holly and i think it's really important we talk more about the rose view because i i've been working in this space as, as you have because you're a female entrepreneur for many years and we were sort of hitting our head against the wall and not progressing. Yes. And then it was so wonderful that Alison got to sit next to Robert Jenrick at a dinner. And, and Robert Jenrick's got three daughters and they were talking about female entrepreneurship. And so sort of they agreed and, and Alison agreed to lead on it, this wonderful report. And of course it was research with a difference because we didn't just go out and do more, more research. We looked at 50 reports that were already out there you know, we, we looked at, you know, Federation of Small Businesses, Deloitte, Barclays, the whole, whole market. We looked at 50 reports. We then looked at the countries where female entrepreneurship um, had far better records in the UK. So we looked at Canada. Uh, we yes. looked at the USA. We looked at Australia, Sweden, the Netherlands. And we thought, what learnings can we do? So we did deep dives on those countries. And after we'd done all of that, we came up with five key barriers. And then we checked them with, 5,000 entrepreneurs, 150 key influencers. And we did this with one-to-one -one meetings, round tables. And thank you so much, Holly, for being involved because it was so important. I, it was, well, you. it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I met my yeah. lovely, I, I sat next to Alison. We had this wonderful evening, just a couple of us with Alison Rose. I mean, you know, this wasn't pulled together, yes. as you said. Yeah. It was really real. It felt very raw. And it and, was and fantastic. That's what yes, that is absolutely it. And like you say, Alison was involved right to that nitty-gritty detail and really got to talk with people like yourself as the half successful entrepreneurs so the big the big um barrier that is always um focused upon is access to finance and we've got three interventions where we're tackling that the first one is one which um we launched last july where we um, initially got just over 20 um, financial institutions to sign up to the Investing in Women Code. We've now got over 30. Um, and it was a working group. It was in collaboration with all the banks. And, you know, and HM Treasury run with this. And we have regular updates and a raise review board with Alison and representatives from Treasury. And I'm really looking forward to the first lot of data coming through, which will be yeah. us at the end of June, but probably sometime in the in the autumn when we get to uh, to see it. So so that was the very first inter intervention, because I always say if you measure it, you treasure it. And, and before now, although it's something we've measured because we've been running with our Women in Business program for a few years, the actual sector didn't measure it. So it's no. a real positive way forward. And I think that's worth um, just before you go on mentioning that to the community, you know, it wasn't measured. This was the point, you know, this is the first, Alison has now put this in place where actually what happens to women in potentially what, what was a dark zone you know it's like no one actually knew if women were getting money or funding and now actually we're going to start to see and i'm so interested you know, when that comes out to see what is the state of play yeah no I, I, absolutely and, and of course today isn't just about mainstream finance it's about the alternative finance as yes. well um, and of course the the next two um interventions um around access to finance are in that VC and investor space and certainly tackling the VCs. And you'll have seen that report by Diversity VC um, probably 14, 15 months ago now, where it's, the, it's that hor horrific stat of only 1% of VC funding goes to female entrepreneurs. Gosh, it is quite shocking, isn't it, when you hear that number, 1%. I mean, it, it, it really is. When you think about, you know, I'm sure everyone here is completely shocked by that number because it's, it's you can hear it in different guises, but it, it just shows you. Um, and when you think the power within, you know, this community to take those next steps um, and, you know, go up that level, um, it really isn't something that obviously people are doing. And this is why you're making it, easier and that more and more i think julie talking about finance women feeling less of the imposter syndrome um, breaking down business making business 
colourful and it is, you know, the backbone of this country is small businesses. You know, it's not a sort of throwaway um, hobby that people sort of do. You know, this is why such an organisation such as NatWest are putting such a focus because this really is important for our country, for our economy. So I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, Sarah's emailed in and asked, how do I access back her business? Okay, Sarah, so it is on the NetWest Big Business Hub or you yes. can Google hashtag, um, hashtag back her business. Um, that will take you straight through to the, uh, the necessary web pages. But any challenges there, reach back out to me. I'm on social media and I will um, personally introduce you to the team. Oh, wow. There you go, yeah. Sarah. Yeah. And um, what are the five barriers females are facing from the Rose Review? Yeah, no, I'm really pleased that question has been asked because we, we didn't cover the full five barriers, did we? And yes, absolutely yes. Right, um, Holly, that is definitely one of them. So, and do you know what? We toyed when we did the Rose Review as how to word this barrier because I personally don't like saying that women lack confidence because I think that is almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. What I like to Agreed. say is we need to find the courage. And I think we fan, can find the courage and the confidence. And, but it's back to that. And, and this is a challenge both in, internally in corporates, um, but as well as in business, that for whatever reason, that self-belief in women does not appear to be the same as what it is in our male counterparts. And I'll give you an example. You know, if a female looks at a job application and it says you need to do these, be able to do these 10 things, you know, a man will look at the first three or three of them and think, yeah, I can do three and I'll learn the rest. A woman will look at, even if she can do nine, she will dwell on the one she can't do. So we do need to get, if you like, beyond that and instill belief and think, actually, I might not be able to do all 10 now, but actually I'm really good at that, that and that. I can bring a lot to this role and I can learn the rest. And so we do need that shift in mindset. And we, we do talk a, a lot about mindset in our um, entrepreneurship plans with our entrepreneurs. So I think as women as well, we need to take a step back and actually probably be less humble and articulate better what we can actually do. Because, you know, another, another barrier we haven't spoken about is that the, the caring responsibilities. Again, mm. just that sit with women whether it's children or the elderly and do you know what we do an amazing job as women of juggling caring responsibilities the housework the shopping the budgeting quite often you know pack lunches everything and the day job at work and all the amazing things at work and we are the best organizers and you know and, and we we sometimes just don't quite appreciate what we can do so for me i think you know if you are in those situations where you, you feel that you haven't got the courage to push yourself forward. You have got to be brave, but find somebody, you know, whether it's um, a friend, whether it's a partner, a mentor, who's going to be your sponsor and give you that encouragement. And, and that is something else we found, Holly, in the um, Rose Review, which I thought was really sad. And this came out of some of the interviews in the hub with entrepreneurs that were just setting out. And it was, we were talking to them about, you know, so why do you feel that females say that they lack confidence? And they said, well, my family didn't want me to do this. They wanted me to get a paid yes. job. So they, they oh, don't I've really heard it so many times. Successful. Yeah. I know. It's, it, it, and, and it's incredible, isn't it? It, 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 it is. And, and I sort of get it. You know, put yourself in the shoes if you've got a child that could go into a paid job, but actually they're saying, no, mum. Um, I want to follow my dream and do this. But do you know what today, with all the support that's out there, and we've talked about the NetWest support, but the support in British libraries, growth hubs, you know, d d you can still do a side hustle and the day job for a while, if you like. Get your parents on yes. side and then just go for the side hustle full time and it's no longer a side hustle. There's ways and means. <laughs> but, but, but I There's ways and You need that reassurance and and what works well certainly when we see entrepreneurs not is our accelerator hubs is they reassure each other so that is why networks yes. are so important especially for women completely completely before we end this interview um one of the missions that holly and co um we have an, an uh, 
four of them, but one of them is our young um, and the next generation and supporting entrepreneurship. Um, and, you know, basically feeling, I mean, education is all over the place at the moment. Um, what are your thoughts about the sort of shaping future of that next generation? Because I know NatWest are doing a lot in this area and um, I almost have to prize myself away from that team because I'm so eager to jump on in. Yeah, oh no, thank you, um, Holly. And you are absolutely right. It is so important that we, we talk about the, the next generation. You know, the, the world will look different for the next generation and it won't be the same corporate jobs to go into. So a lot of them will need to be entrepreneurial in what they do. And I'm really um, delighted that Alison picked this up in part of the Rose of You as well. And you could follow well those discussions. Yeah, so, um, and what um, we're looking at is one of the interventions of the Rose Review. We're setting up an education coalition so that both public and private sector um, work together to see what best practices and what organisations are out there already supporting our students in this space. But actually, what can we do to get it on the curriculum, which I think is so, so important. And funnily enough, I was only on a, a meeting last Friday and there were some incredible people in the room. Um, Founders for Schools, Peter Jones Academy, Young Enterprise, um, the, the, the Careers um, uh, and dream bigger which is our own program which you know about um holly so yes. actually even within that small group we are already reaching a lot of students so anybody interested who has got you know children like you have holly that um, want to learn more about entrepreneurship then then do look at well look at dream bigger and and in that west and and it isn't just for girls it's for it's for um mixed um classes as well and look at all of the other programs but we will continue working on that and and princess trust be involved as well and we're doing some research and and holly i might pull you into that because you'll be a great ambassador of supporters oh yes please well. hand up i would yeah. love to i'd love to um i'm a patron of the women supporting women at the princess trust and you know what they're doing is absolutely amazing and i'm so glad that you're working with them and uh more than ever you know our young need our help um there's going to be more kids that are coming out of uni potentially and um out of school um where you know there aren't jobs with unemployment and things so this is the time that we can embrace um our young and their entrepreneurial you know um excitement hopefully and we can encourage it julie thank you so much for your time it again goes to show the commitment you guys have for small businesses that you put this amount of time aside to answer questions and to talk to us all about it. And, uh, you know, I'm totally honoured to be working with NatWest and um, thank you again for all that you do. No, thank you, Holly, too. You are such a great ambassador and somebody great. And, and I love these um, SME SOS um, sessions. I, I listened to a few when I was on a walk the other day and totally inspired. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Wow. It was absolutely amazing to talk to someone who has such insight into the behind the scenes of a company such as NatWest. Now, let's, as ever, just review what we spoke about. Right before COVID, six weeks prior, Alison Rose announced that they would become a purpose-driven bank. Well, you needed a woman to do that, and she did. Um, we also, they looked at having the loans, um, but there was a whole lot wrapped around these loans. And do go and head to business, uh, NatWest Business Hub, because I can't tell you what support there is. Entrepreneurship team, business builder program, which is all online. Um, you have women and business specialists. This is one of the only banks who have trained up those who work for them to be business specialists for women and what is holding women back back her business do go and check that out a fantastic ability to have matched funding to when you crowdfund an amount they will if you're successful natwest will just basically match that fund and 6.5 million pound fund for Princess Trust um, working with NatWest and £1 million fund for social enterprise. And the big kahuna number is £1 billion fund for women in business. A £1 billion fund that Alison has put in place to help women, to help the road
proposed report actually come to life. I won't go through it now, but there were five barriers that um, the Rose Review identified to why there is this difference between men and women. Um, a lot of it has got to do with access to finance. It's got to do with the fact that we're the main carers. It's got to do with the fact that we have this thing called the imposter syndrome. And as Julie rightly said, let's not talk about the sort of negative. Let's look for courage not because she's not confident. Let's look for courage. And it's our language that we use amongst each other as well. And kids, the world will look different for our next generation. We know that. And I am so encouraged by the Dream Bigger three sessions that NatWest are giving out to our young future entrepreneurs. And for anyone who's doing a good job, I just want to say, blow your trumpet a bit. We need to start highlighting people for people to follow, people to show us that the future is bright for women and that this is the era where it changes. Um, I'm so encouraged. Thank you, NatWest, for not only being an expert, for supporting SME SOS, and thank you, Dell3 and Royal Mail, um, for being wonderful partners. Lots of love to you all and um, big kiss.